In this video you will learn what is formic and why it is the best possible variant to create forms inside React. So what problem do we have? Typically we have a form inside React like this, for example this is a registration form. And then you simply create a markup for this form like form, inputs, submit button inside some errors and then you will simply use use state to store all these properties and then read them and submit. And you will do it in every single form. And if you additionally want some errors, some validation, it is quite a lot of stuff to write on your own and it doesn't make a lot of sense, because essentially inside forms it is always the same. We want a change event, a blur event, we want some errors, state and so on. This is all can be done with the library. It makes sense to write it on your own if you have a super simple form that you don't need to reuse. Which brings us to Formic. And actually inside React World we have one super popular solution previously which was Redux Forms. The main point was that you will have all your forms inside Redux and the idea was the same, everything was reusable. But it is really slow to use Redux for forms if you have a lot of them, because it is slower to update Redux state than just local state. This is why we have an alternative which is called Formic, and this is just a local state and just some sugar to create local forms inside your component. So our first step here will be to add Formic library. This is why yarn add, and here we will add Formic. After this we can jump back to our form, and as you can see here I generated create React app and I have a basic form inside which is a pure HTML. And you can use Formic in two different ways. First of all I want to show you how to use it with React hooks. This is why here we can import use Formic and this is a hook from Formic. Now here inside our app we can create Formic. And what is this? This is just a call of use Formic, where inside we can provide some fields. For example, here we can provide initial values. And just as you can see here, we have a really nice autocomplete because it is covered with TypeScript. So what initial values do we have here? We have an email, which is a string, username and password. So we can simply write here, okay, we have an email, empty string, username, also empty string, and then we have a password. Now here we have on submit function where inside we will get our values when it will be filled. And this is just a function where inside we can write console log on submit and here are our values. And what we want to do now, we want to bind formic to our form. So here we can say on submit and typically here we will create a custom function, but not in this case, we can simply write formic.handleSubmit. And as you can see here in autocomplete, we have lots of stuff which is available for us inside formic, like dirty, values, errors, whatever you want. So here we need to use dot handle submit. And now what we want to use inside every single function is first of all a name, it is mandatory for formic, for example an email here, and also a value. And value here will come directly from formic, so this is formic.values.email. And after this we have a non-change event, which we don't need to create ourselves. Here we simply say formic.handleChange. And if you are interested how Formic knows what element we are using, this is this name, or you can either use ID here, it will also work. So as you can see, all standard stuff like changing of the inputs is written directly inside Formic, we don't need to bother with it. And now we can do exactly the same for our username and password. So here we can write value, and we are reading here formic.values.username, and we also have here on change event, which will be formic.handleChange, and the same for our password. So here we will have value, formic.values.password, and here on change event, which is a formic.handleChange. Let's check if it's working. I will reload the page in browser and we don't have any errors. Now here I'm hitting submit and we're getting on submit function with email, username and password, which are empty. Now here we can simply write something and hit submit and we're getting all these values, which actually means Formic implemented all this default stuff that we typically do on our own. Now let's add some sugar to our Formic. First of all here I want to add on blow event. 
because essentially we have it out of the box and it makes a lot of sense to leverage it for errors. And here we can simply write formic handle blur. I will just copy paste this on blur and put it in every single input. And after this we want to render errors from formic inside our HTML. So here we can write formic.errors.email and we are checking here that formic.touched and here we have all elements which were changed dot email and formic.errors.email which actually means we will render this part only when we have errors inside an email and our property is touched. Now let's copy paste this code inside every single error. So here we have a username and formic touched username and formic errors username. And now let's write errors for our password. Here we will just paste the same and change it to formic errors password, formic touched password and formic errors password. And actually here we will never see these errors because we don't have any validation. Which actually means here what we can write is validate method. And this is a method where we are getting values. And actually values are just values that we have in this specific moment inside our form. So here we must prepare some errors as an object. And here we can say that by default the errors object is empty and now we can check ok if we don't have inside values email anything then here we want to return an error. So here we can say errors.email equals email is required. Now I can copy paste this code twice and do the same check first of all for username and then for our password. Let's change here the text username is required and here we have password is required. And after this ifs we need to return our errors, which is an object. Also here in the second if we must change it to errors username and in the third if errors.password. Now let's save this and reload the page. And now here I will just hit submit and as you can see on the right we see this validation. And actually this is this part, so here we are getting errors inside formic errors with this validation. Which actually means we are not writing this logic in submit, we simply define some validation rules, we are writing it inside validate and formic does everything for us. But actually we can do it even better by using additional package. And actually we can install a package which is called yup. So here yarn add yup. And this is a specific package which is providing for us validation and for me can use this package. This is why here on the top I will import star as yup from yup. Now here I will comment out this validate function and we will write here validation schema. And actually the idea is the same but we will write all these error validations as a schema. This is why here we can assign inside yup.object and inside we can provide all our validations. First of all we must provide an email and here we can simply say yup string and after this dot required. So actually this is exactly the same code like here. And inside required we can specify our message for example email is required. But after this we can also say dot email and then we will have a check that this is a valid email. So here we can write invalid email address. Now here we must write exactly the same validation for the password. It will be yup string then required and here we can write password is required. And last one here will be username. So here is yup string and we have username is required. Let's check if it's working. I will reload the page and as you can see it works exactly the same. We are getting validation but now it is easier to support and read. And here now we can write an email and just hit submit and we are getting invalid email address. And it is checking the string out of the box. And this is all really amazing and this is exactly how I recommend you to use Formic. But if you want to use more sugar you need to use Formic in another way. What I mean by this I want to comment this use Formic because now we want to use exactly Formic as a component. For this here on the top I want first of all to import formic but I also want to import here form, error message and field. And this is the only way how we can use form, error message and field together with formic. You can't use all these three components together with use formic. So hook does not provide for us any magic and this is what we can do together with formic component. So here I commented out completely our formic and here we just have this return. 
what we want to do now, we want to wrap the whole form in the formic. So we have here formic on the top, and then after our form, we are closing formic. But it is not all, inside we want to write render props, and here we can simply write it like this. We just have here a function and we return a markup. And now we want to move the whole form inside. So this is exactly how we used React previously, before we got React hooks. So we have here formic and then a render props inside. And now the main point of usage formic like this is that we can have more magic and we can have components from the formic. Which actually means here we don't need to write form, we can simply write form component. And here on the bottom we are not closing form, but form component. And as you can see here we don't need to provide handle submit inside, it is already there out of the box. The same goes about inputs. Here we can simply write field, name and we say that we have an email. And after this for example a placeholder email. We don't need all this stuff at all, because it will be provided out of the box. And the same goes with errors, we can simply write here error message, name, and here is an email, and after this we can also specify a component, in our case it must be span. And we simply close here an error message. And as you can see we are writing really not a lot. This is why here I want to copy paste form and just change it to username, and name also to username. And now we can copy paste our errors, and here inside our class name error we have our errors, and we can remove this input, and just change here a name to username, and component we can leave as span. And exactly the same let's do with password, so here we will have field name password, placeholder password, and we can just write here type password, like in normal input. And now let's remove this input, and copy this error message inside our class name. So here let's write password and component is span, and we are done. Let's check if it's working. I will reload the page, and as you can see we are getting exactly the same form, and now here we didn't bind anything inside formic, so this is the problem. We have this formic component, but we must provide some functions inside. First of all we want to provide here initial values, and actually here on the top we had initial values just inside use formic. So we can copy paste it and just create a property for this. So here we will just have const initial values and this is an object. Now we can provide these initial values directly inside formic here. After this we must create on submit function, and this is exactly the same like the function that we provided here. I can just copy paste this function here on the top and change it. So here we have our const on submit, and this is an error function where inside we are getting our values. Now we can provide our function on submit inside formic. And last thing that I want to provide here is validation schema. And this is exactly the same stuff that we created previously. Which actually means we can just copy paste this validation schema from here and put it on the top. Now we must create a const validation schema and just assign here this up object. And now inside we can simply provide validation schema and save our file. As you can see here we don't have any errors, so let's reload the page. Now here we have just the same form, we are hitting submit and we are getting our validation. And the validation check for email is also there. But as you can see we wrote really less, because we leveraged these components like form, field and error message inside formic. And I can still say that I prefer to use use formic, because I don't want to see any magic, and I just want an easier way to write forms inside React. And actually if you are interested to know how you can create single select and multi select inside React, make sure to check this video also.